Okay, now we're in the layout window. To the right side of your keyboard, there's a number pad. Select the number four. You're in the perspective view six, which is what we just came from. That's the camera view. Um, number two is the top view. And five is the um, light view. That's the direction that the light is hitting it from. And three is a side view, whether it's the right side or left side. So we're going to work in the, um, in the perspective view for right now. Okay, let's kind of position this and zoom in on it and we can pivot it around and all that good stuff. Okay. Okay, let's go back to the camera view. Hit the number six. The keypad. Keyboard keypad. Okay, and let's go to the camera. If you look down at the bottom, you've got um, several options here. You've got object, bones, lights, camera. We want the camera and you got the properties here. Okay. Now if you look here where it says position, you can scroll the middle mouse wheel and you can see that toggle from rotation to position. So we want to leave it on rotation. Right click and move the tire to the right of the screen and while you're in, still in the screen select the wheel again and it puts it back into um, go to position sorry let's rotate that let's rotate it okay. then move the surface set it out of the way and then slide the position and what we're looking at is the position of the camera. We're not actually rotating the tire. We're moving the camera around the tire. Okay, so now you can right click while you while you're, while you're in position. Kind of move it down a little bit. And then position moves it out. Right click while it's on position moves it up. Alrighty. Let's kind of rotate it just a little bit more. So we can see a little bit um, the side of the tire a little bit. Okay, that's good. Now let's bring the surface editor back up. If you notice, I've, I've already selected um, the render tab. We've got several tabs running across the top here. We're going to look at the render tab. The render tab allows you to render um, what the what the object is going to look like. Okay. Okay. I've got a surface that I've um, edited in Photoshop, and I'm going to bring that in. I'm going to and, and I'm going to use that as a bump map to create the tire tread. Bump maps are pretty good to use when it comes to saving geometry. Uh, if I was to do this in Modeler and I created each individual tread and created an array and all of that, I would have a lot of geometry. And remember, geom uh, extra geometry, more geometry, uh, along with the render times. So let's go to the surface editor again. And Select the tread. Make sure we have the bump selected. And let's go to go to now. How you would do this is that you would go to load image, and then you can select it from wherever you made the image. So I've already got it loaded up here. So let me load that again, and I'm gonna select the Z. An auto size and use texture. Now, when I now to preview it, I can go to the render tab and select render frame, and it's render frame on the left hand column or F9. And 
and then you see the thread is on there, but I want to kind of um, make that a little finer. So let's go back into the um, to the texture panel here, and let's change this to about 175, 175, not meters, but millimeters. So let's put another M there, okay? And let's do a test render again. Okay, that looks a lot better. And you can actually um, change the height of the bump amplitude. Let me just kind of boost that up a little bit and see what we get. Uh, 1.35. Let's try that. And let's render it again. Okay. A little bit more detail. And you can kind of tinker around with that. And... Um, until you get it the way you like it. Let me see if I can increase the bump in the surface editor to bring it up a little bit. Don't want it too, too deep either. And let's render. Okay. So basically, that's how you um, create tread. I'm going to try, let's, let's put a little background, let's change the color of the background for those of you who don't know how to do that, so we can kind of bring that tight so we can see it a little better. Okay, let's go ahead and change the background a little, uh, a little bit. For those of you who don't know how to change the background, uh, basically you go to, uh, and what says, more windows. And see where it says um, backdrop options or F5. And you can change the background of the uh, layout window. So let's select this and let's do a kind of a green. I don't a green that I don't want too bright right now. Just for display purposes. Select OK. And let's do a test render. OK, now you can see the tire a little better. Okay. Well, if you notice here, there's uh, the green is showing up in the inside of the tire. If you don't want that, then let's, let's cancel this and let's go to um, in the surface editor again, and we can go to let's see, two sided. Let's change both of those to double sided. We're going to change that one to double sided. And let's see what happens if we change that one. You probably can't see that one, but let's change it anyway. Now let's render it again. Right? And there you go. And there's a shadow casting in the inside of it and everything. Alrighty, and that's uh, just a look at how to create a tire. And you can actually add lettering and all that stuff to the side of it. You can actually create your lettering in Photoshop and keep the same colors of black by using the numeric um, color values of each color so you can match the color so you don't have different shading going on with the black that you create the lettering with and all of that so uh, and just kind of tinker with it it's um, lightwave is a good program to work in and uh, you just need um, a little patience it's uh, any 3D modeling program, uh, it's going to take some time to learn how to model in it, and my choice was lightweight. So, thank you guys for watching, and take care.